Can you tell me what treatment you've had and what treatment you're still having? Yeah, so my treatment all started quite quickly after I'd seen my consultant. I was referred to my oncologist who'd put together a plan um, and she explained that all to me. Um, but the first step um, was that which she discussed with me was to do with my fertility, knowing that mm -hmm. chemotherapy can leave you infertile or it can send people into early menopause. She had quite an open discussion with me about whether I'd considered um, if I wanted a family in the future. Um, I It's always been in my plan. It's not that I was trying to have children, but at the same time, you don't want to lose out on sure. the opportunity. So she referred me to a specialist um, who put me onto a short course IVF which allowed me to have seven or eight eggs frozen, I can't remember which, mm -hmm. um, for future use. So that was great and took it didn't take much time at all. It was about 14 days. Um, and after that I was then quickly put onto um, chemotherapy. So And so for the um, for the eggs that you have mm -hmm. frozen, is it um, are they just kind of there waiting yes. until you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> until I think you could choose the number of years up to a maximum of 50. So I was oh, like, okay. well, 50 years. I mean, obviously, I might choose to get rid of them before then. And but I when you're eight, in 50 <laughs> years' time, I won't be having them. But was, if you're oh, 83, yeah. you've got options. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was part of me that thought, actually, do you know what? I'll say 50 years because other yeah. people don't have the opportunity. I might decide at some point that mm. I want to donate that to somebody else okay, um, yeah, going sure. through the same thing. So I was just like, that's it can think about those things yeah. later just go for the maximum and then hopefully it'll, either it will help me or it will help somebody else in a similar situation yeah no that's great um and then you had chemo so once you'd started that yeah the plan was that i would have six rounds of chemotherapy before moving forward to having a resection on my bowel so i started that quite quickly um the first lot of chemotherapy i had was full fox mm -hmm. um i managed Four rounds of that before actually the tumour in my bowel um, caused a blockage and I had to be admitted to hospital. Mm -hmm. So my surgery, my chemotherapy was obviously stopped at that point. My surgery was brought forward and um, I had the whole right side of my colon removed. Um, my surgeon was amazing. It was all done through keyhole surgery. Oh, wow. um, and I was lucky that I didn't also didn't need to have a colostomy bag um, at the end of it. So... The surgery went really well, but my time in hospital was quite difficult because they picked up a couple of other things whilst I was in there. I'd, um, for my chemo, it was delivered through a port that mm -hmm. was implanted in my chest, um, but I was one of the unfortunate few that developed a blood clot in my heart on the end of the catheter, which I'm told doesn't happen to many people, but right. I was like, it's happened to me. <laughs> um, and I also picked up an infection. So... That time in hospital was difficult, um, but I came out, I had about six to eight weeks to recover, which um, was obviously really useful. And then I started on some mop-up chemotherapy. Um, again, it was going to be six rounds, which I did manage to complete. Um, I didn't find the side effects of the chemotherapy I had at that point um, too difficult. Everything was managed through um, medication that they could give me to help like nausea or help any diarrhea that I was experiencing. So um, I was quite happy with the way things were going. Um, when I came to the end of that chemotherapy, I saw my oncologist and she told me that I was going to be sent to have CT scans, but not to be concerned because it's not that they were looking for further cancer, just that they needed a baseline then to track back going forward mm -hmm. so they could see where I'd finished. Um, unfortunately, though, that CT scan did flag up that I had a number of lesions on my liver, um, which meant I had to start the treatment process all over again, which mm. came as quite a big shock. Yeah. Um, I hadn't been expecting it. And I'd told myself that I think I'd thought mentally that I was coming to the end of it. Mm -hmm. It's how I got through my chemotherapy in a way was like, I've got three more and then that'll be it yeah. for, for now. Um, so I started the process again. There was quite a number of discussions over how to proceed with treatment because the lesions were so small. 
they didn't know whether they should go straight to chemotherapy or whether to wait 12 weeks and see um, what happened with them so that they could actually confirm that they were liver, well, mets from my bowel cancer. Um, however, in the end, um, because I'm young, they decided that they would treat them in that way and that I would have chemotherapy. So I started um, on Fulfiri, um, which included Cetuximab, which is a targeted therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so I have had 10 rounds of that, which finished um, at the end of April. I was qu hit quite hard during that session, those sessions of chemotherapy by fatigue. I think that was the hardest side effect that I had to deal with. And sometimes it just kind of felt like my body was in shutdown almost. Mm -hmm. I couldn't physically, couldn't do half of the things that I was able to do um, previously. And the smallest, smallest tasks like walking to the supermarket or walking to the shop became quite a, yeah. an effort <clears throat> for me. So I think that was, for me, that was the toughest part of that um, chemotherapy. So that ended, and I'm now waiting to have further treatment for my liver. So the plan is that I will have um, some ablation mm -hmm. um, to kill off the lesions on one of the lobes. And then following that, I'll go on to have a resection of the right lobe of my liver, okay. which my surgeon believes is the best option to try and get rid of everything yep. together. So fingers crossed. And then no more chemo, hopefully. Up in the air, yeah, who okay. knows what might happen. I don't yeah. know whether... They might think that they'll do a set like four sessions or something yeah. of mop up chemo following mm. surgery. I suppose it depends how um, the surgery goes and how mm. the ablation goes, whether they can remove everything or sure. if um, they come up against any problems. They've left my pick line in, so I'm yeah, I, I am <laughs> I'm going on erring on the side that I'm probably going to have more chemo. Okay. Than, yeah, otherwise they would have whipped it out. Yeah, 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 and so sort of emotionally then mm. um you know that's been that's a lot and it's a lot of chemotherapy and and it's a lot of surgery yeah. as well and so how have you sort of how have you coped with all of that I am very lucky to be surrounded by well a family that are very supportive and friends um they've really been there for me mm. throughout and that in saying that I don't necessarily mean that they've been doing things for me. I just, I have always known that if I have a bad day that I can pick up the phone to somebody and mm -hmm. there'll be somebody there to talk to or someone will offer to help me with things, which just even if you, even if you never need that, the knowledge that it's there yeah, is really sure. comforting. You don't feel alone. And then again, um, connecting with other young people that are going through similar um, experiences through um, charities such as yourself, Shine, mm -hmm. and um, other forums that I've met people where I can talk about specifics of treatment or get mm -hmm. some advice on how to cope with that side effect from chemotherapy. So that's all helped. And then for my own em emotional well-being, I've had to find things like readjust my life mm -hmm. slightly. Um, I was a very active person before my diagnosis. The fatigue made that difficult, but I kind of just had to readjust. I don't, want, I don't know, boundaries is the right word, but what I was able to do and just find things that I enjoyed doing so that I didn't almost get drawn into just sitting at home and doing mm. nothing because the tired was tiredness was overwhelming because I think that can be the frustrating bit right mm. that you know what you used to be able to do yeah. and you can't do it and then that can be like quite hard yeah and I think in terms of the whole cancer diagnosis and treatment and everything is that you're going through it as an individual but nobody else's lives stop mm. just because yeah. you're going through treatment so you are surrounded by your friends who are progressing at work or people getting married moving forward like yeah all little things and there it, it's surprising how much that can affect you because you almost feel like your life's a little bit on hold yeah um your main priority is trying to get through treatment mm. so it's finding the balance and actually still managing to do things in life that make you happy as well mm -hmm.
And so what's that been for you? Um, most recently, walking. I've okay. set myself a little challenge that I want to eventually manage to walk the whole of the Thames path. So okay. I've been doing little sections at a time. Yeah. I mean, having been an active person, I've just tried to get myself out in the fresh air mm -hmm. um, and explore London probably a bit more than I have been doing in little tiny chunks at a time. Manageable chunks. Um, yeah, because yeah. I, I love traveling obviously I've been restricted of what I can do um whilst been undergoing treatment and that has been quite a big loss for me um so I've had to find a way to kind of get satisfy that mm -hmm. in a different way so we have a beautiful country here which yeah. I probably haven't explored enough so um I'm doing that and then just trying to make my life as normal as possible I've I've been very lucky that I've been able to work because work has been very flexible mm -hmm. um, and that kind of gave me a sense of normality in my life. Um, it's quite social, my work, so I could go to work but I didn't feel under pressure that I had to go in if I wasn't well um, and that's been good for me, keep like mentally yeah. um, going as well. Yeah.